Hello, friends, and welcome to episode five of the Unsunday Show. Really glad you're here. I'm excited to see where this newly launched podcast takes us. We have what I believe are some really re- relevant topics to be talking about that are going to be very applicable for us in this 21st century setting of institutional religion, and I'm looking forward to seeing where we go as this podcast continues to unfold. Hey, today I want to talk to you about a couple of things. I want to talk to you about pulpits, and I want to talk to you about pastors. I want to ask a question, why is there a pulpit? And then I want to explore the reality of the pastor-driven church. And I have a couple of articles that I've written on my blog that I'll put the links to on this episode for you so that you can see those as well. Those will be the articles that I'm loosely interacting with as I move through this episode. You know, recently in my Twitter feed, I saw this statement, quote, wherever the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going, end of quote. I have to say that when I first saw that, I cringed a little bit. But then I thought, you know, that's true. It's sad, but it's true. And so immediately it got my mind going about pulpits and power and honorific titles and, you know, top-down authority ad infinitum ad nauseum. It doesn't take much to get me going. And when I hear this stuff, that's where my mind goes. It starts racing through all of these issues. And I start thinking about things to write, things to say because I have a real passion for this, and I have a real passion for exploring these issues and asking the question, is this really a valid thing to do? Is this what Jesus, is what we're doing in 21st century institutional Christianity, what Jesus envisioned for his body, for the ecclesia, the assembly, the church? And I keep coming up with the answer that no, it's not. It's outside of that. So my mind starts going about some of these things, and at times it's a little hard to get it to shut down. One of the things that I hear is endless debates about whether women should be allowed behind the pulpit. But in each conversation I hear, the most obvious question, in my opinion, is missing. The most obvious question to me is, why is anyone scrambling to get behind the pulpit? And why is there a pulpit in the first place? In my humble opinion... Nothing kills the original intent of the gathered assembly quicker than a pulpit. I remember I was behind one of those for years, so I'm speaking from experience when I talk about these things. But I do believe that nothing separates the assembly into an us-and-them mentality quicker or more effectively than a pulpit. Nothing says, keep your distance. Nothing says, I'm the trained professional, and you need to hear what I have to say more effectively than the pulpit. Add to that the raised platform that we put the pulpit on, and the priesthood of all believers vanishes, and it's replaced by the priesthood of one or a select few. Add the pulpit into the mix, and active participation of the entire assembly turns into a lecture given to passive spectators by one who is assumed to be in control and assumed to have all or most of the answers. Let me say again that I believe that this model, this church model that we have today in the 21st century, I believe that this model has come to us via church history by those in supposed positions of power or control who perpetuate power and control by perpetuating power and control. It's man-made. It's foreign to the New Testament and I believe it's harmful to the church. Let me say this. I believe that the pulpit is not passive, and I believe that the pulpit is not neutral. I believe it's harmful. It's harmful to every member functioning. It's harmful to the one another's happening when we're corporately gathered together in the assembly. You can't read 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14 and escape that reality that that is God's desire for every member to contribute. But when we come to assemble in most institutional Christian settings, one person's doing all the talking. One person's doing all the speaking. There's, There's no interaction. It isn't there. It doesn't exist. The rest of us, the laity, which we've talked about in a previous episode, all face the pulpit. We're all pointed toward the, the person who is telling us his or her opinion of a text or of an idea 
or of a concept. There's no dialogue. There's no participation. There's no sharing of gifts. There's no expression corporately of spiritual gifts. It's a one-person show, or maybe a few people up front. And so the phrase, wherever the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going, is an unfortunate reality in modern institutional church settings. In a community where Jesus said that that kind of power and control wasn't to exist, we encourage it and we perpetuate it. But whatever happened to the Holy Spirit leading the assembly? Whatever happened to Jesus being Lord of his church? Whatever happened to the priesthood of all believers instead of a select few? And so I ask the question again, why is there a pulpit? You know, the Apostle John in 1 John chapter 2 said this, quote, But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. End of quote. But we've professionalized the office of, of pastor and, and bishop and elder to the point where, you know, it's become a career path, it's become a career choice, and so we think they're the professional with all the answers, and we're content to sit passive in the pew and kind of watch somebody else do Christianity in front of us there. But that isn't the intent of the church. That isn't the intent of the ecclesia. In fact, that shuts down the original intent of the ecclesia. And so I ask again, why is there a pulpit? And why does that phrase, wherever the pulpit is going, is where the church is going, why is that true? Shouldn't the church be more fluid than that? Doesn't the Holy Spirit lead the individuals in the church so that the church can be more fluid than following the one man, following the pastor, following the the pulpit, so that wherever the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going? What if I'm in that setting and I feel God leading me in a different direction? I can't go there without getting in trouble. I can't go there without receiving some kind of admonition some kind of punishment, because I'm not free to do so. I'm not free to go there. I'm not free to go a different direction. Because, unfortunately, it's true, wherever the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going. But let's change gears for just a moment and talk about something closely related, and that's the pastor-driven church. So if we've got a pulpit, there's there's somebody in it, right? There's somebody up there. There's there's the pastor-driven church. And so, you know, that, that tweet that I saw, wherever the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going. It also applies not only to the pulpit, but to the person behind the pulpit, to the pastor, to the central figure in the church. And in addition to asking why there's a pulpit, I think we need to explore the pastor centrality that's so prevalent in most of our institutional religious settings. The pulpit, as I said earlier, isn't neutral. And I believe it isn't neutral for several reasons. And Number one being because it presents one more level of separation between the assembly and the professional up front. And I'm using air quotes on professional. In almost every institutional religious setting, everything inside the room and everything outside the room points to the pulpit. The pulpit is the focal point. It's inescapable. Outside the room, everything from our signage to our advertising points to the pulpit, doesn't it? Think about this. In the neighborhoods where we live, the sandwich board signs go up on sidewalk corners every Friday, pointing to a meeting room and ultimately pointing to a pulpit. Church websites do the same thing. They echo the same themes. Come be with us on Sunday and hear a message from behind the pulpit that's sure to inspire and bring you back for even more. That's outside the room. But once we enter the room, once we go inside the room, everything again points to the pulpit. Doesn't it? Think about it. The pulpit is the nucleus of the Sunday event. All of the seating points to the pulpit. Instructions emanate from the pulpit. As we're told, things like when to stand, when to sit, when to sing, when to pray, when to say hi to people we might not even know, and when, of course, to give. It's kind of like a well-oiled machine reaching its climax when the pastor takes his or her position behind the pulpit to lecture us for 30 to 60 minutes. This is the pinnacle of the religious institution's week, and it's what the previous week's preparation and hype was all about. It's the climax of, you know, the sandwich boards that went on the corner the Friday before. It's the climax of what the website said was coming this Sunday. And once the lecture is complete and the Sunday event comes to a close, Preparation for next Sunday event begins immediately with no one asking why. 
And so is it any wonder that so many are leaving that setting and seeking to find a more authentic reality outside those four walls? You know, talking about preparation for next Sunday's event, I always think, and I've mentioned this in a previous episode, I believe, I think of that movie Elf. Remember the movie Elf? It's one of my favorite movies. And there's a scene in the movie Elf where, you know, Christmas is done. It's finally over. You know, all the preparation's done. Everybody's exhausted. And, you know, the the scene is back at the North Pole and everybody's cheering that, yay, another successful Christmas. And, you know, there's just so much joy and celebration and everybody looks so tired. And then someone makes a statement, well, let's get ready for next year. Well, that's kind of how it is inside that institution. You know, inside that institution where we think that wherever the, the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going, and we make the pulpit and the pastor central, as soon as we're done with that Sunday event, preparation starts for the next one. There's no break, and it's exhausting. Been there, done that. We can say this, that institutional religion is a pastor-driven system. As a person behind the pulpit, the pastor or pastors get to and are expected to set the agenda. They're expected to set the goals and the direction for the church. As central as the pulpit is, the pastor is even more so because he or she is the living, breathing, speaking embodiment of the pulpit and the one supplying the pulpit with its personality and life. And so we have to ask the question, is it any wonder that someone would make that tweet? Wherever the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going. At least they're being honest and they see things as they really are. You know, we've taken one word, pastor, that appears one time in the New Testament in Ephesians 4, and we've institutionalized it, haven't we? We've turned that person into a religious celebrity, and we've handed them power and control inside an environment where power and control over others shouldn't exist. I don't think Jesus was joking when he said, it shall not be so among you. Wherever the pulpit is going, and that's where the church is going, isn't a banner to proudly wave as an expression of some great accomplishment. It's a symptom. It's a symptom of something gone terribly wrong within the assembly that needs to be talked about honestly and openly. For those with their finger on the pulse of the church, it's one more obstacle to living out the one another's of the New Testament. And people, it has a a chokehold on every believer functioning as a priest because it brings with it an unbiblical us and them, clergy laity separation that creates and sustains an illusion and facade of top-down authority where no top-down authority really exists. I believe that the pastor-driven model is not neutral, just like the pulpit is not neutral, and it's a poor substitute for genuine community. But having institutionalized the pastor and having institutionalized top-down authority, we feel kind of stuck in that, don't we? We don't know where to go with it. And that's why so many people are leaving the institutional church setting in droves. I mean, everyone's got their own personal reasons for leaving. I have my personal reasons for leaving, and this is a big one. I haven't left the faith, but I have left that institutional setting because of these problems that I see within it that prevent it from actually being a live organism, actually being the body of Christ as living stones. We've replaced those living stones with old covenant concepts of altars and buildings and special days and special weeks and and so forth and so on. You know, think about our daily conversations, as I've mentioned before. Oh, look at that church. Isn't it beautiful as we drive by a building? Or, Joe is my pastor, as we give Joe honorific titles that we don't give to anyone else within the assembly for their spiritual gifts. Gary's not my giver, but for some reason, Joe's my pastor. But we don't distribute honorific titles to everyone equally. It's it's just not done because of the system that we've come to believe where pastors are in control, pastors are in charge. And so our daily conversations, and, and mine do that too, betray the idea on some level of what the ecclesia is, what the church is, what the assembly is. We've made it man-centered. We've made it pastor-centered. We've made it pulpit-centered. Our advertising's pulpit-centered. It's pastor-centered. Our websites are pulpit-centered and pastor-centered. And if you're in that setting and, and if you're finding yourself getting frustrated with it, know that you're not alone and know that there's hope. And that if the Holy Spirit begins to draw you out of there and and prompt you to pull away from it, You're not being weird. 
It's not a weird thing that's going on. You're not, you know, you feel like you're disappointing someone when you leave, you know, and unfortunately, if you do leave, you're going to lose some friendships because those within the assembly, for some reason, many of them are being told or are, or feel that to associate with someone outside of that is unacceptable. But, you know, Christ's church is huge, and there's a lot of different expressions of his church. And so it's healthy to re-examine these issues. It's healthy to re-examine why is there a pulpit and why is the church a pastor-centric church? Why is the church pastor-driven to the point that wherever the pulpit is going, that's where the church is going? What if the pulpit's going in a bad direction? So until next time, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Bye. Thank mm-hmm. you.